Man, look at how dirty I let this thing get. But this is actually the original engine that came out of my uh, 370Z. Same one that I did uh, a whole drift weekend, a whole bunch of competitions. Uh, we got four podiums total with that engine. So like, it owes me nothing. I pulled it out running uh, in favor of the built engine. That's not what this video is about, but you know, th this one's built now. It's all fancy. Anywho. So anyways, I wanted to make a video to see what was going on with this one. I just want to tear it down and just see how well it was after having about two years at 580 wheel horsepower, uh, 12 PSI is what it was tuned for. And I beat the living hell out of it and it never gave up on me. So I'm really anxious to see what it looks like on the inside. But this is it. go there's a lot of junk in there already so let's see what this looks like pretty good that's crazy that means i don't see anything really no, no bearing material no nothing so all right let that drain let me get all set up again All right, uh, probably not an exciting part, but worth looking at. I mean, looks fine. What I, what did I expect to see? It was a running, driving. It's actually way cleaner inside than I thought it was gonna be. Goodness, that's a big. Uh, what is it Valvoline and Rochelle Rotella solid oil? That's actually exactly what I've been running in it for the longest time. I am pretty impressed. It's very clean inside. Well, okay. All right, next I'm gonna start taking all this stuff off so I can get all the Vivel everything off. Take off the second cover, flip it over, and then we'll see what those bearings look like once uh, there's a little less weight on the engine stand. I'm kind of scarred ever since that one fell. There's one engine that fell like right before I closed the shop and it was, uh, was kind of nightmarish. I couldn't believe that happened. <laughs> Anyways, we're rocking and rolling though. So upon breaking this rear cover loose, I found a nut that just popped out. I wonder how long this had been sitting there just rattling around. <laughs> it was uh, definitely hanging out somewhere in here. That That's just comedy. Oh man, I'm sweating. Jeez, I don't like it. See some of the heat spots on the cams. Well, kind of hard to see in the uh, on the phone. Oh, that's actually kind of a decent angle. Yeah, you can see it now. So 
They was getting hot. Oh, that's crazy. Top of the buckets all look like that too. The, uh, the extent of the damage really so far is just heat. So yeah, you can see a little discoloration, but they're all like that. But none of them look like catastrophically, you know, burnt or damaged. They just, they just look like they just got a little warm. Here's the other side. Same thing almost. You can see the heat, heat marks, but nothing crazy. All right, let's get these heads off. Gotta zoom out. All right, so with the heads off now, uh, there is one thing I've noticed on some of the higher power cars, especially if you say open deck, is the cylinders will actually wobble and you can see it on the head gasket. It looks like I was actually starting to get a preview of it. So you'll see it up here, not so much here, but up here. And you can see it on all of them almost. They're missing a little bit of the, uh, film or whatever the nylon film so now let's take this head gasket off if i even can oh, i might need two hands for this oh there it goes it was hanging on hanging on for dear life but it's kind of crazy look at that only like the edges of the pistons are missing carbon which means the edges of the pistons were getting hot but that's it. The rest of it seemed like it was okay. No little signs of pitting. Like, you know, oh boy, hard to explain, but like, see how it's like all smooth, you can tell. Not really knocking or nothing a whole lot, which is really good. Means I didn't suck as a tuner, at least for the most part, I don't think I did. Looks like it did really well. Let's see what this one looks like. Gosh, dang. Okay. <sighs> ah. A little more abrupt. Yeah, see, it's like, looks like we may or may not have been wobbling. Like, at least probably on the edge of wobbling for sure. So, leave those here. But, um... It's really cool to open this, tear it down, and see what it looks like after having this much power for so long. And just look at just the raw results, just taking apart an engine. And this is what we're looking at. So far, it doesn't really look that bad. Uh, but that wobble that I'm talking about, that's where the CSS little insert really comes in and helps. Because you can't, the cylinders can't move around at all. And, um, and also that top inch of aluminum really does help by pulling the heat out of the combustion and... Uh, it helps a lot with knock resistance. So anywho, uh, time to flip it over and check bearings real quick. All right. It's kind of tricky to do this all with one hand, um, but got it all flipped over, got my impact, I got the thing on there. Uh, and like, if you know, you know, but cylinder two is the bearing that always spins, it seems. So we're gonna look it on first and see how good the bearing looks. All right. Uh, Okie dokie. Wait. Whoa, that is beautiful. Holy crap. That's really good. That means this crankshaft's gonna be reusable. Um, let's see what the top half looks like. It's kind of hard to see, but it looks, honestly, it looks fantastic. I'm gonna have to pull them all out one at a time. Uh, it is kind of approaching the end of the day here, so I'm gonna resume the rest of this video tomorrow. Uh, but great start knowing that number two is pretty good. So I'm gonna take them all out and then also I do wanna see what the main bearings look like after being 
beat to hell for two years. But like the crankshaft, it turns around really, really easily. You know, it looks good. I'm impressed. So I was expecting way more damage, to be totally honest. That's amazing how well it has done. Just goes to show you how really well designed these uh, these VQs are from the factory. And that is why when I build these, I just only do the short blocks and everything else is stock. Stocker the better. The yeah, Nissan already did all the hard work and figured it out. Trick is just don't do anything silly and mess with that. Just make it just a little stronger. Very awesome. Myself taking off gloves. This is the dumbest thing. I'm just trying to save them because ever since COVID, gloves became very expensive. So for all you sick people that bought all the damn mechanics gloves and drove up the price, thanks. <laughs> all right. Anyways, we're here to look some bearings. So this is number one. They're a little oily, but like small bits there. You see a small scratch, but nothing crazy. Other side is pretty similar. This is number two, a little worn right there. A uh, little bit, little bit of wear. Here's number three, similar to number two. Overall, really good. This is number four. It does have like one scratch, so maybe a piece of dirt kind of got pushed through, and the the bearing kind of just ate it a little bit, but nothing horrible. Number five. Uh, little, you know, tiny bits of wear on the coating, but overall looking really good. Little bit of a scratch right there, kind of hard to see because of that reflection. And then here's a sixth bearing, really good as well. A little bit of wear, but nothing detrimental, nothing crazy. But this is all six pistons in order, so, you know, one, three, five, and then two, four, six. And it looks like, you know, you can see from the heat... There's not a lot of carbon buildup around the edges of the pistons, so that's kind of cool. Like, it's like the harder you run it, actually, the cleaner some of these parts will be. So it's almost like, you know, get on your car every now and then, push the pedal down. Um, and the pistons all are in good shape. I don't see any, like, cracks, no uh, deformities, like nothing. Like, everything honestly looks really good. It's kind of amazing. So, all right, time to get the girdle off, and let's look at those main bearings. insane okay so here we are this is the main number one you can see it definitely got some some age on it but that is an untouched main bearing even when i did the rod bearing install two years ago so that's still the original main bearing see there it's a little bit a little bit of carnage but it's uh, it's hanging in there this one missing the coating has one good scratch through the middle but I mean, overall, looks kind of all right. That top half actually looks really good, considering how that one looks. Next pair. Yeah, this one's got a big old gouge dug in there from uh, probably like a little piece of dirt. If it ran dry for a second, hard to say. Uh, that one down there looks like it's missing the coating as well, but not horrible. You can see some, like, stuff here, but it looks like it's surface level. Actually, no, it's got a gouge in there. Yeah, that... And then this is the last one, number four. So missing all the coating there in the middle. And then the top half actually looks kind of okay. But like, considering the condition that they're all in, uh, none of them are spun. So, you know, this was a good running engine when it came apart. And all the rods, I mean, they look straight. Let me see. Yeah. None of, none of those look bent or anything like that. And this car was like, been seriously abused. Only about a car length of difference there. Ben staying out of the smoke uh, of Aaron. Right on Aaron's store at the exit. Very good run. And then here's a crankshaft. 
I'll lean it back just a little bit. So, so that's number one right here. Still oily, but this crankshaft, uh, I'll go get it, uh, get it checked to make sure it's still straight. And then uh, I usually just pay the machine shop ballpark 80 to 100 bucks to put a nice polish on it, make it really pretty. And then this block, I'll go get it closed decked so it looks like that. And then all I need is forge internals after that, bearings, ARP hardware, a little bit more machine work, and you know, keeping it keeping it simple. That's how I like to build the engines. But this is really cool. I'm so blown away with how good everything actually looks on this engine. I thought was, I was gonna find some stuff I really didn't like. There's no reason I could have just left that motor in there and kept running it. Other than it, it is a lot of power. These are these stock rods are the weak link. And I've actually done this a couple times. I've just replaced these rods with uh, forged rods, uh, like what, what this one has in it. Here, let me see. Uh, yeah, this one has uh, Carrillo rods. Really nice, really expensive, but really nice. And I've done a few engines with just rods in it. I like to call that the like stage one engine. Costs about 4,500 bucks to do that. That's like parts, labor, everything. And uh, I have a few of those. One of the most notable ones will be uh, Justin Flores' engine, actually. He made, we made like 767 on his car with just rods in it. Just so as to show you how well designed these engines are from the factory and how little you actually have to do to just maximize results out of them. So these super duper fancy big power engines uh, that are like, you know, $20,000. I think it's beautiful. It's great that people are pushing the platform. But for what's realistic, most people are totally cool with 800-ish horsepower on the top end. Stock motors can make 600. So there's almost no need to have these crazy $20,000 engines when a uh, $10,000 engine will hit that 800 horsepower goal, no problem. And then what's even crazier is that a $4,500 engine, with just like I mentioned earlier, with only rods, will clear 700 as well. So it's like, where do we really need to focus our, our money when putting cars like these together? Um, we'll say buy nice turbos, buy nice injectors. I have those on my website. If y'all need them, let me know. Uh, same goes for tuning, but for actually putting stuff into the engines, I've, I'm starting to believe that you really don't have to do hardly anything. And I'm, I'm almost blown away that not more people aren't trying to see how few weak points that they can address and see where or how strong the engines really are after that. But this right here is mostly just to see what does it look like after 580 for two years? 12 PSI, a lot of drifting, a lot of competitions, a whole drift week. This is honestly looked amazing. I could have kept running it. So that's very good news. Uh, I am going to build this engine now and it'll probably be for sale. So I think I'm going to go and end my little video right there. Hope it was uh, informative for people. You got to see what it looks like to tear down a whole VQ 37. And uh, I hopefully some of the info that I was talking about, you find useful. Um, if also, if you're interested in getting engines built, I can ship them no problem. Um, I guess that's really it for me. So that's it for this video. And I'll finish it off by looking at this beauty because it does happen to be done at the right time. Right place, right time. Super simple, super awesome. Oh, and then, oh yeah, VR38, put the heads on it. Love this thing. I am so ready to put that in my car. Alrighty, that's it. Bye.